The third Super Series final takes place in Edinburgh. The familiar venue hosts the familiar finalists. It's the third straight final for the Ayrshire Bulls, who tackle first-time finalists Sterling Wolves, who have gone from bottom of the table in 2022 to finalists in 2023. We had two great semi-finals last weekend, and in the 45th and final match of this championship, these teams are aiming to go out in style. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Mitchell, alongside me, former Edinburgh, Glasgow and Scotland international Lee Jones. Lee, we've reached the climax of the championship season. And two sides who have done well. Heriots were the leaders on the table. They got taken out by the Stirling Wolves last week. So it's two against four as Ayrshire Bulls and Stirling Wolves go head to head. Yeah, and you could say an unexpected final given the way that the season panned out. But both teams really deserve their, their spot in this final. And I'll be expecting a competitive game. Uh, Bulls obviously used to playing in finals. Um, they've been in the three Super Series. And as a club side before, very used to being in finals. Sterling had a great semi-final win against Heriots last week and they'll be looking to um, mix things up tonight. Let's have a look at the scores from last weekend. The two semi-finals, Heriots took on the Sterling Wolves. And what a game it was. Terrific stuff out at last Wade. Heriots unable to play at Golden Acre. No floodlight. Sterling Wolves winning by 26 points to 21. A third straight win for the Sterling Wolves. And there's your Bulls against Watsonians, 19-0. At halftime, Watsonians took the lead at the start of the second half, 22-19 they led. But it was a very impressive Ayrshire Bulls performance in the second half. It was, and it was a fantastic match all round. The first half was very, um, very tight with it, 19 all at half time, And it was kind of tit for tat. Um, Ayrshire Bulls, the, the power of their pack, really shone through towards the end of that first half and the start of the second half. And that, that kind of got them over the line in the end. It was a really dominant performance in the second half by them. Let's have a look at the two sides who will be playing for us this afternoon. The Ayrshire Bulls, well, they welcome back three players from injury. Grant Stewart, William Farquhar and Andy Stirrett in. They replace Alex Maguire, who sadly misses the final due to injury. Craig Miller and Chris Elliott, who moves onto the bench in place of Christian Townsend. Yeah, it's a fairly consistent selection for Pat MacArthur, and he's got guys coming in um, to replace injured players. Grant Stewart's a, an obvious one there. And Andy Stirrett, um, you know, a lot expected of him to come back in and, and do a job tonight but quality player well the Sterling Wolves name the same starting 15 that took the number 4 seed past top seeded Heriots a strong pack with last week's man of the match Connor Gordon looking to lead the way Ben Afshar and Craig Jackson have paired well together at 9 and 10 but inside centre Marcus Holden he's got a key role to play he has he's, he's been standout all season he leads the team well you know he's a, he's a fairly measured character I heard him on the Scottish Rugby podcast this week and it was in interesting to see his take on his his team being in the final and um, he'll really lead from the front tonight and, and look to provide a platform for for the rest of his back lane. Yeah he's the kind of guy you want to play for basically he's just he's got that calmness in his captaincy he's got that authority and he can do it as well. Yeah and the, the calmness was one thing that shone through for me because you know um, it was maybe the, the questions were asked, you know, what's it like to be in this final for the first time? And he said, to be honest, the boys haven't talked about it. And that's the sort of thing you want to hear. And, you know, they will be talking about a final because it's an important thing and it's a big occasion to be in a final. But you've got to play the game, as they always say, play the game and not the final. And that'll be very important for Sterling tonight. Bulls have got, obviously, massive experience in finals, but Sterling in there for the first time. The, the boys will be excited. Um, but at the end of the day, it's 80 minutes of rugby. And here come the teams at the Hive Stadium in Edinburgh, the home of Edinburgh Rugby. Pat MacArthur's Ayrshire Bulls concluding a season with a thrilling championship final, according to Pat MacArthur. And he said Sterling Wolves getting there is a testament to that team's dedication throughout the year. As far as his own players as well, they've, they've done well dedicating themselves in training to improve key areas. The commitment's been displayed by all, and they're well aware of the Wolves' physicality and work at the breakdown as seen in the match against Heriots last week. Eddie Pollock for Stirling County there in the red and black. Well, continuity of selection has been important to the success, so their head coach, Eddie Pollock, he liked to point out the work of Luke Guerin and the medical staff who've done a great job in having everybody available for this final. Be a very good Heriots side last week, the smart, physical, accurate and interestingly, Lee said a very disciplined display which demonstrated not only the quality of the play but how the coaches and players have worked together to get the different types of game plans when they've been needed. Yeah, and I think that was a big emphasis from Eddie was the input that the coaching team had had with Duncan Hodge and Sean Kennedy, you know, two intelligent guys there in terms of rugby IQ and I think they almost 
they just played the perfect game against Heritage. You know, they, they, they talked about kicking to Heritage to earn the ball back, um, to put them under pressure. And it was obvious that they'd really thought about the way they were tactically going to play the game. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how their approach to the tactics goes tonight against a different side in, in Ayrshire Bulls. Ready to get underway in the Super Series Championship final. Craig Jackson ready with the ball. In the red and the black. Some those taped up fingers of Craig Jackson underway at the hive. And an immediate error and a knock on. That's not the ideal start for Andy Sturrett. And an easy one for our referee to spot. And our referee is Ian Kenny, the man in charge of this one. It's little things in finals just to set you up, Lee, and just spilling the opening kickoff. You know, immediately you get the scrum down, immediately you're going to be in pressure on your 22. Yeah, it sort of takes the sting out at the start of the game, doesn't it? Um, and it's interesting, the conditions tonight, it's, it's poured down with rain for the majority of the day. Um, but obviously we'll have a consistent surface here at the Hive. Um, but yeah, it takes the sting out a wee bit, that, that kind of... Uh, Craig Jackson went for the, the long, low trajectory on that kick, and it was a tough one to take for Andy Sturrock. Ben Ashar with a put in. Ashar, there's Holden, first receiver, here he comes. Good support coming in from Connor Gordon, we're seven. From tackling in the midfield, but it's quickly out by Afshar. Afshar again, and through Jackson. What a player to have, year 15, Glenn Bryce. Back inside comes across, James Pout. Gregor Hiddleston. And the coloured scrum cap, George Breeze, the prop also with a scrum cap. Afshark being dragged down, that's great work by Lewis McNamara. Off on to Tom Smith. Inside it comes, Ed Hatzel, oh, he scored in the semi-final, he's going to score in the final. What a start that is for Sterling Wounds. He is an absolute wrecking ball of a man and he found the gap, drove his way through and the opening score inside two minutes. He scored in the semis, scored in the final, Ed Hatzel going to score. It's a dream start for Sterling Wounds, isn't it? They, they've started with real purpose, you could see the first carry from Marcus Holden. Just real intensity in his carry, the, the basic things done well. And then Ben Afshar had really quick ball, managed to get his guys around the corner. Glenn Bryce had a carry on the wide um, outside there, Ned Hasdell, who had a great game in the semi final last week, just powers over. Um, and it looks like the, the Bulls look a bit shell shocked on that. Well, they did to Heriots the same thing last weekend. They came out the traps really quickly. The conversion is knocked over. Seven points to nil, and the Bulls on their heels. It was just good play, and it's unusual actually to see Ryan Sweeney drop a tackle, but you've got to credit the number eight. He's got the, he's got the physicality and the power, and he drove his way through. Yeah, and it's, it's a good line as well. He's, he's almost picked a, a space just between two defenders, which means they're potentially second-guessing who's fully committed to that tackle, um, and it's Ted Hastel's benefit who gets his team on the scoreboard. Six tries and 13 appearances for the big number eight. Ben Ashar with a long kick. And again, you can dial it back and you can trace it back to the dropped kickoff. Good takedown. Ryan Southern, where's 13 for the Wolves. Cullen. Round the corner it goes. BT that was tapped, was it? Now, was it tapped forwards or was it just knocked down? Oh. I tell you what, you're not going to get much change out the referee if you ask for a yellow card. Bobby Beatty at least has the decency to smile. Uh, but uh, Ian Kenny won't take too kindly to any more of that, I suspect. No, I think it looks like he's, he's set his stall out pretty sharply there, which is good for the referee early in the game. It's well kept in. Another chance for Jackson to launch it long. Again, good take. Ersher Bulls trying to get into this final. Stunned by the loss of points early. Bruce Cullen. Cullen. Ed Bloodworth playing in his third final. Stirrett round the corner. 
Mills Beattie hasn't scored the final. This is his third one he's played in. Trying to get Bardelli in. It was a difficult one for Holden to try and gather. Ollie Horn, 15 4. The men in pink tries to make the tackle. Ben O'Shaw just calling for some beef in front of him. And he gets that to the two lock forwards, one either side now. James Powell moves to the other side. There's the long kick. Bardelli did well. That's well, a terrific run. They're struggling to stop him. Although I think the knock on is coming. And as the pass comes out from Ryan Sweeney. Well, there's one thing for sure. If you drop the ball at Jamie Shedden, he's going to have a little rumble with it. Yeah, he's a big, powerful player, and it looks like the Bulls have just threatened on a, on a couple of occasions earlier on with Robert Beatty going through. Um, but Sterling, you know, man, I think we're just seeing evidence of the slippy conditions with a, a couple of loose balls. But um, Sterling will take great confidence in managing to turn them over and, and end possession back early in this match. One of the problems in a final, if you lose a key player, I mean, if you lose a key player in a regular season game, that's one thing. But last season, I think they lost three players in the opening yeah. hour, uh, including Blair McPherson. And they just want to make sure that they're not going to lose anybody else. Certainly not like to Bobby Beatty and Co. There's a like, little bit of a struggle here. Jimmy Shedden obviously fell awkward. Like, I think there's going to be a change here. Well, the luck certainly is not going to continue. Yeah, you feel for him, don't you? It's go all that all the way through the season, and he's been a he's been a key player for the Bulls. Um, you know, five minutes into a final, it's a it's a real shame. But you know, um, likely Thomas Glendinning will get a, an opportunity from the bench, and he, he's a really strong player himself. Yeah, good call. Horrible sight to see so early in the game. I mean, he showed his power in the run to break through and the problems that he can cause. There's a few glum Ayrshire faces. Think of open. Yeah, it'll be. They wouldn't have planned for probably the first five minutes of this match uh, going the way that it's gone so far. It's been it's been a tough start for them, but we're only five minutes in. Last year the final went on to extra time for the extra half hour, so <laughs> these players will be, I'm sure they'll be ready to go the distance. Well, tough one for Jimmy Shedden, the 23 year old, six foot six, he's big, strong, three tries in his last four games. And that really is a loss. I mean, to be fair to Thomas Glennon, 21 year old, you know, he's got a good record this season, five tries in 12 games. Yeah, he's a, he's a really strong player, both sides of the ball. He came off the bench down at Millbrae uh, last weekend and had a couple of really good defensive interventions, which is great to see for a winger coming off the bench. And um, You know, like I say, it's an opportunity for him. It's a real disappointment for, for Jamie Shedden, and it's, it's sad to see. You know, there's not many players of his stature in the game. You know, he's a, he's a huge man, but he's also powerful. He's quick, and he's got an offloading game as well, so he's been a real asset to the Bulls, but... Thomas Glendon in offer something different, you know, quick feet, sharp, and like I say, a defensive edge as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Ben Afshar gets it from Ed Hasting. There's a long kick. Well taken by Horn. And got a fair amount of punch in that one as well. Well, Pat MacArthur, he lost three three goals in an hour in the final last year. Which, with it going to extra time, it really caught up on them. Maybe some little word with the coaching staff just to see, you know, how do we keep this team calm at the moment? They've got a great leader in Blair McPherson, of course. He can do that on the field, but you've got to be thinking about these things. Jackson didn't engage, he would have been caught from coming in from the wrong side. He relied on his teammates to do the job. Marcus Holder is in at scrum half now. 
Santos, you could see him holding off the Bulls. And there's the scrum half, he'd been caught up previously in the pile. Connor Gordon, the headband winner of action last week against Heriots. I'm sure high. That's knocked on by Horn. There could be problems here for the Bulls if they can get it moving. Ross McKnight. Great work on him from James Powell. Sure, scrambling for the ball. Thrown back by Hiddleston. There's the little clip kick coming in. Craig Jackson. Refuses to go dead for the ball inside. On to Horn. It's a decent clearing kick from Oli Horn, the 24 year old. Just a seventh appearance. Spent some of the pre-season with Glasgow Warriors. He is a player with promise. Yeah, definitely, and he adds to an exciting Bulls back three. You know, the back three over the course of the last few seasons, there's been a few different names in there, but they always offer a threat. And Ollie Horn, definitely one of them. It's a good clearance. Um, it's it's interesting. Sterling are really look really comfortable in the way they're looking to play at the moment, and they're happy to to kick well and, and put the pressure back on the Bulls. Yeah, Elias Cavan. One of those back three from the past couple of finals. And he scored in both finals on a winning and losing occasion. Down the blind side, being dragged down by Rory Jackson. It's Ben Afshar. Yeah, good play into contact, clean ball coming back. Rory's leading the charge. Holden, instead of outside him. Big of Van Southern outside him. Still, it was on the tackle. Good work there from Calvin Henderson. Again, getting the defence. That's Mositis. Lithuanian. And there's the turnover. Great work coming in from Ryan Sweeney. Cullen. There's work here for Glenn Bryce. That's clever. That's experience for you, Lee. He just knew that it was going to be difficult to, to try and catch on that angle. Just knock it back, give yourself a little bit more space in field. Clever play. Yeah, good play by Glenn Bryce. Had some real experience to this Sterling backline. Had a ter terrific game in the semi final last weekend, and they'll be looking to him for his, to offer up his experience tonight. Um, that kicking game's important for him. Obviously, with Sterling looking to that game last weekend and it looks like in the opening exchanges the majority has been through Ben Afshar and we had one going over from Craig Jackson but Glenn Bryce is important in that as well when it comes to the counter attack um, and if they're willing to kick to then receive better ball back um, Glenn Bryce will have a, a big part to play in that so Grant Stewart plenty of targets Ed Bloodworth, Rory Jackson not misses the ball that Gregor Hiddleston trying a kick. <laughs> Some going. Holly Horn. I know we shouldn't laugh at forwards kicking, but almost seems like it's compulsory. I think he heard me listing out the other kickers in the <laughs> team. It wasn't initially well dealt with. The counter kick. This is where the referee assistants have to watch for the offside line. It's inside on to BT from Cullen. There's a jab through. Nicely dealt with. Bryce does well. Pass inside, perhaps a tad risky. Connor Gordon got there. PT working hard, trying to drive through. So to a stirrup. And he's come in from the side. Well, he doesn't concur with referee and Kenny. Let's see it again. I have to say, I've got some sympathy for the Usher Bulls centre. Yeah, I think his entry was almost pretty square, wasn't it? But then he he kind of gone 90 degrees, so you could see why the referee, if he didn't see his entry, maybe thought. Um, this was an obvious tactic by the Bulls last weekend against Watsonians, was really when they sensed an opportunity at ruck time and maybe when the opposition were a bit light, they were piling guys into the ruck to try and... Um, to counter ruck and try and earn that turnover and, and they did give away a few penalties on occasion similar to that one it's something the referees will definitely be looking at but um, you can see the Bulls are they're really trying to put the opposition under pressure at ruck time and that just means they'll have to be 
from a Sterling point of view, even stronger over ball, and it's not a case of turning up and doing your job and switching off. You've got to be properly on it at that time. Ed Timpson gets out the way. James Pow takes. Now it comes down the side. It's Connor Gordon. Gordon with a little offload. Timpson gets the ball away. Here's the opportunity. Heron trying to drag his way through. Well, Ayrshire struggling again here. Here's the opportunity. Jackson. Oh, it should have been in. Ed Timpson was in an ideal position. Just couldn't take the pass, Ed Timpson. So close to the line. And this was nearly another score for the Wolves. They come. Yeah, Craig Jackson, great decision to come back down that short side. And I don't know how we fix that. As um, Zed Timpson maybe just hold a yard of depth as a pass, maybe a wee bit more sympathetic. But that, that really looks like a chance lost there. But um, clever line out play by Sterling in the lead up as well. Well, that was messy. And again, it's gone over. Hiddleston got on the end of it. Here comes the drive round the corner. Corner Gordon's going for the line. The referee has a look. Has he got there? Held up. That's good positioning from the referee. He knew immediately what to look for. Oh, it's good credit here. Ed Bloodworth was in trying to hold up. I think he's done just enough. Yeah, that's great work by Ed Bloodworth. Does enough to just hold it up, and I think. It's almost um, Conor Gordon's arm stuck under the ball. Um, good call by the referee, but yeah, Sterling are looking, they're looking ominously yeah, like scoring. Um, if it wasn't down that short side, it'd be sure just rewards if they managed to get speakers. themselves over the line. It's a good season, Ian Kenny. He took charge of Heddy at Ayrshire Bulls early in the season. Twelve tries in that encounter. And he's seen the Ayrshire Bulls lose to Watsonian, so he's not been the luckiest referee for the Bulls this season. But there's actually quite a few referees really getting good experience at this level. You know, I've, I've been impressed with David Sullivan, Ray Campbell, you know, Johnny Ferrum, you know, to name but a few. Um, you know, they're getting good experience and just learning how to control the game, but also trying to let it flow because it's a very attacking competition. Yeah, the, the referees over the past few weeks, just looking back, have been back David Sutherland uh, ref down at Millbrae last weekend. And the thing that's probably stood out for me is just the communication from the referees has been really good. And we've obviously got ref mic on the majority of the commentary here, and it's just interesting to see. It's great to see how they're communicating with the players. Connor Gordon taking the long kick. Afshar gets it through. George Breeze. And the counter ruck looked good. And was. Well, the language may have been tasty from Lewis McNamara. We do apologise if you lip read his response. But it was a terrific piece of rugby and it forced a turnover. Yeah, really strong body position, wasn't it? And Sterling just under resourced that carry there. You could see him there, he's straight on the ball, he's supporting his own weight. You know, he's got the feet spread apart, but the body's being. You know, doing its job, that's impressive rugby. Yeah, it was as clean a turnover as you're likely to see, probably because there wasn't many bodies in the area, but um, yeah, great work from Ian McNamara. Not clean, but behind by Ollie Horn. Bangs the right footy kick all the way forward. It's a great opportunity for some of these players to play at this arena for the first time as well. It's a beautiful. I mean, Edinburgh have done really well. It's just what Edinburgh rugby needed. Yeah, definitely, and they, they get the opportunity for you know two exciting backlines with a lot of pace. Um, you know, playing on grass pitches week in week out that, that's fine, but being able to come onto an artificial pitch and be guaranteed that consistency of surface is something as a as an outside back is a, a real attraction. Holding on the carry, repelled by Brad Roderick Evans, who's made the standoff position at the Bulls' his own turnover as well. Nicely done. Stirrup goes for the long one. Here's the opportunity for Glenn Derrick. Excellent play, turns it back. Cullen into McPherson. Cullen again. Roderick Evans. 
Off to Ryan Sweeney. Gets the support from Calvin Henderson. Reese Cullen, man of the match last week, Bobby Beatty. That's uncharacteristic. And then it was knocked forward by Ayrshire Bulls. Gregor Hiddleston went for the kick. And well, there's no other way to say it, straight to the chops of Bobby Beatty. He takes a sore one here. Bad enough you dropped it. That's the last thing you want after you've just... You want to kill the game you've just knocked on and then you get on in the face for your troubles. Thank you, Gregor Hiddleston. We'll take it wherever it be. Plays with a smile on his face all the way through. Former Glasgow Hawks player. And the London Scottish kind of strength and conditioning coach now is... Um, Bobby Beatty does some work with Scottish Ballet as well. Yeah, I was thinking that actually. Be keen to see whether he's tried to bring anything in from the ballet world into, into his rugby team. I thought he went down very gracefully there. <laughs> he won't thank me for that. Definitely considering that he'd just been kicked in the face. <laughs> Definitely. Interesting final, 17 minutes played. And Ian Kenny happy to get the scrum reset. Well, if you saw the semi-final last weekend, the Ayrshire Bulls were very strong in the second half of the scrummaging. Andrew Nimmo, Grant Stewart is in today. Calvin Henderson, the front row. Ed Bloodworth and Rory Jackson. And not a bad back line either. With Ryan Sweeney, Lewis McNamara and Blair McPherson. A lot of work to do for this. Sterling Wolves back, George Breeze, Gregor Hiddleston, Marius Hamasitis. Are they two great lock forwards and Tom Smith and James Pout. Ed Timpson, who could have scored in this game. Connor Gold, Gordon at seven. And Ed Hasdell, the only try of the match so far, packs down at eight. Again, Hasdell will take. Bryce needs some help. Helen was in there. And Sharp. Well, they've got the two most consistent scrum halves in the tournament head to head here. Southern. Oh, Sharp gets the pass away so well. Jackson, and he stepped out. He's unlucky, Ross McKnight, because he was gone. Well, that must have been close. I'd like to see this one again on the touchline. Yeah. Touch touchline. David Sutherland, Bob Nevins, the men making the call. Yeah, the foot was on the white, and I tell you what, only just. Yeah, very close. That's probably the first time we've seen Sterling in their own half go more than a couple of phases without looking to kick. Um, and as we've seen there, almost managed to get away up the up the open side there. And Ross McKnight, I think, currently sitting top of the try scoring charts um, with 13 for Sterling Wolves. Um, I'm sure he'd be keen to add another one or two tonight if possible I'm sure he smelt number 14 coming there and just enough to take him out of play Ross McKnight and Bryce so important players and both were on the scoreboard in recent times and Bryce with a couple of tries in the win against Southern Knights which was so important for them Here's Hiddleston. Oh, what a dummy that is. He's still going. He tries to cut back inside. Hiddleston dragged down by Cullen. What a run that was from the hooker. Can they finish it? There's the opportunity. There's the pass out long. And there is Glenn Bryce trying to go in the corner. It's brilliant rugby from Sterling Wolves. Glenn Bryce, I mentioned his try scoring threat, over in the corner in this championship final. Brilliant, brilliant work by Sterling Wolves. Another line out play that's managed to cut the Bulls open there. They had one down the front earlier on in the game. Gregor Hiddleston with it. Ben Afshar on the inside just draws the eyes of Grant Stewart away. Gregor Hiddleston manages to go through. He's, he's five yards out for the line, and the, the Bulls' defence is in disarray. Uh, I think it's Mikey Heron manages to get that ball out to Glenn Bryce, who gets in at the corner. But fantastic work. They've got the Bulls on the back foot off the back of that line out, and then. They're ruthless in the way that they managed to get over in the corner. Brilliant by Glenn Bryce. Head down, went for the line. It's his eighth try of the season. And the former Glasgow Warriors player has given Marcus Holding the chance. They've become the first player 
to kick more than 100 points in the championship this season. He's on 99. And he's going to remain on 99 for now. But what a start from the Wolves. Yeah, look, they're, they're looking really confident in the way they're trying to play um, in their own half. They're, they're relying, even in the Bulls' half, they're using their kicking game really smartly. It's a strong finish by Glenn Bryce here as well. It's obviously the, the cover in defence, Andy Stewart's hair and across um, with his teammates. Um, he had to hold his ground, Glenn Bryce, and he did well to get it down as well. What a game this is shaping up to be. Stirling County won the last three games, that's their best run this season. Interestingly, they've never won four straight Super Series games, be it the Championship or the Sprint. If they do so tonight, they will be crowned champions. There, McPherson. Cullen. It's a lovely little offload. Good work from Ryan Sweeney. Back to Cullen again. There's Grant Stewart. Ed Bloodworth providing some support. There's Ollie Horn. Tucks it through. Well taken down. Homosaitis on the tackle. I think he might have been hurt as well. Here's Calvin Henderson. Connor Gordon just on the wrong side, but he was trapped in there. Roderick Evans gets it off onto Ryan Sweeney, repelled beautifully by James Pout. Bobby Beatty. He had no particular place to go. And the turnover by the Wolves. Glenn Bryce. Not sure he's got that clean. Horn fancies this one. Wrapped up by Heron. Too high. The advantage will come. Reese Cullen. Uh, electric movement to get away quickly. Tell you what, Ed Bloodworth may have got away with one there. A little hand in the ruck, trying to protect the ball. Roderick Evans, there's a little chip through, he's going to gather. It's a great tackle by his opposite number, Craig Jackson, and then the steal, and then the second steal, but offside. Lewis McNamara looks displeased. So much going on. Yeah, good passages um, from both sides. I think at, at the tail end of each play, we're probably just lacking a wee bit of accuracy. Um, but it's great to watch so far. I think the Bulls, they've looked to threaten. They, they looked to threaten early in the game. They looked to threaten again there. Um, you know, and got through some phases, but just the, the lack of accuracy at, at that key moment in their, in their spilling ball, which is due to the the pressure that the Wolves are putting on in defence as well. And, and it's you can see they're potentially sitting off um, in defence. They're making the tackle, and then it's at the right time that they're putting a couple of guys in their back rower to, com to compete for ball um, so it did smart tactically from the Wolves as well I think defensively well, Gregor Hiddleston is down, he's got 9 tries in 8 games, he's given hookers bad names he's, he's kicking he's running from the 22 nearly bursting all the way through the other hookers been looking and say come on calm down we've got to try and follow you but it's been, it's been terrific, he's really up for this one and it just shows his confidence has grown, he's scored a number of tries, OK, a number of them are from the mall, but he's just in such good form. Yeah, a great player in the loose, um, which is what you want from your hookers as well, as, as putting themselves about in the loose and offering an extra point of attack. Bardelli inside onto Horn, Horn taken down by Pout. Cullen looks right, comes left through the hands of Stewart. They take Bardelli as, as quick as they get, Bardelli... Runs through one tackle, can't get away from Glenn Bryce. Made the tackle back up on his feet very quickly. But the referee wasn't happy. I think he's saying he's come in from the side and not from behind. And the penalty is won. Luca Bardelli doesn't need a lot of space, does he? He looked so sharp on that left side touchline there. He had a half yard. Um, but good defensive work by Glenn Bryce closing the gate. And he's probably right, he was... Potentially had to retreat to the back foot before he got in there, but um, trying to apply some pressure on ball. I would say he could overtake in a telephone box, but we don't have telephone boxes anymore. You need to think of something else.
good throw, good take, much better. Bloodworth with a take, packed in behind. Grant Stewart. McPherson now has the ball tucked. Well, he's even got themed underwear as the ball is knocked away. Heron. Here's a chance. Heron tries to go past Bardelli. He's well taken down. Again, Ryan Sweeney does well. The kick is short. Ollie Horn is there. I'm sure the coaches will be loving the fact that uh, it's a little bit open for their taste being a final but it's making for great entertainment as the error is there oh what a recovery and into Bryce well that was so difficult for McKnight now Bryce taken down great tackle by Andy Stirrett Jackson on the inside again Ryan Southern trying to push his way through Andrew Nimble collapses down, I think he's more forced down than anything, the referee rightly saw that. Ben Afshar, Holy Horn waits underneath it. Cardelli, well he can take the scenic route as well. That was good tracking back though, Jackson did so well. Cullen on to McPherson. And Stewart dropped it. The referee's going to allow play to continue. Southern hold it. Half shot. And it's pretty good kick that. And they'll take that from the error from Grant Stewart. They are like two boxers just standing toe to toe, slugging each other at the moment. Yeah, it's all action. As I said previously, there's a few turnovers here and there, but what a game um, they're putting on for us. Um, I think we the sort of trend at the moment is the Bulls are becoming frustrated. They're they're putting together nice pieces of play, but at the end, lack a bit of accuracy. That builds frustration amongst their team, but Sterling are only going to grow in confidence from that, and you can see that every decision. They're, they're looking to move the ball quick. If it's not on, they're, they're kicking back onto air. They are really growing in confidence throughout this first half. Stewart, back onto Cullen. Bryce, there's a little offload. Pressure's coming though on McKnight. Does well to shape his body to turn the ball back. Half shot. Again, the long kick. Horn. Now that is an up and under. He really got that into the night sky. And tried to take down Bryce. Cullen stayed back. Can't take your eyes off this. This is terrific stuff. Cullen finds his little wiggle through. McPherson being shoved forward after good work from Rory Jackson. Blocked by Tom Smith, and that's been knocked on. It has been, it came off the hands of Heron. Well, the tackling level is at that of ferocity, fierceness. Andrew Evans again just trying to float it up. The ball is played back, uh, and the referee is going to say, just play it on. Andrew Nimmo, Nimmo almost got the pass where he wanted it, Heron did well, a great tackle from BT, who immediately rips the ball as if to go early. Uh, referee and Kenny basically just saying, hang on lads, let's take a breath. The boxing match continues, it's like they're trading jabs at the moment. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's here, it's there, there's... There's turnovers, but it's it's providing a great spectacle. It, the kicking game is becoming really important. I think both sides are kick-chasing really well, so 
there's not really a lot of opportunity um, on counter attack. The team they're looking for it and they're looking to potentially get to width. But I think both teams have defended really well off kick chase um, so far. But that's something we might see opening up as the game goes on. There's Wheeler to the back. Edelson Breeze, oh, he's rumbling away now. Does he have the support? He does so. Inside onto Tom Smith. Connor Gordon tries to go in there. They're keeping the attack alive. Jackson plays it through. McKnight's got the pace. I think he's got the pace to win this one. He has. What an opening 31 minutes it's been for the Sterling Wolves. Three tries in that time. And it is try number 14 of the season for Ross McKnight as the error was punished. Sterling Wolves are being ruthless. Gregor Hiddleston, just the, the catalyst again, the turnover line out gets his team go forward, manages to get the offload, and then George Breeze with the line break. And really, really smart by Craig Jackson just to put that along the floor. There was no cover in defence in behind for the Bulls because they're on the back foot off the back of a turnover, off the back of a line break. And Ross McKnight shows really good awareness just to, to time his run through. He still has to pick it up and he manages to get over for what I believe is his 14th score Absolutely, for the season yeah. well well 23 tries in the last three meetings of these sides already three tries so far Ayrshire Bulls have won the last five meetings between them but what an evening it's turning out to be is this the 100 up for Marcus Holden Chased him again he remains on 99 points well some terrific rugby and let me just assure anybody watching that this one's far from over because if any team can come back on anyone it's the Ayrshire Bulls and the Sterling Wolves will know that but this was excellent counter rugby yeah it's it's great they, they get the go forward from the line break George Breeze with a Gets the knees up a wee bit and gets himself into the half. And then um, it's just good awareness. I mentioned it before, but Craig Jackson, to know that a team on the back foot, their backfield's not in place. There's going to be space in behind there. And when you've got your open side winger who, on turnover, that's when your back three and your outside backs are going to come alive. Ross McKnight will have had his eye on that space, potentially communicated that into Craig Jackson. Um, and it's a great option, but it's great execution as well. Chance for the Ayrshire Bulls. I mean, it's not a reliable rule, but I often think the more you see wingers involved in a game of rugby, the better the game of rugby seems to be. I'd have to agree, Paul. Yeah. As a, a winger. former winger, yes. <laughs> McPherson takes important figure. Bill McPherson, 11 tries for the season. But it's at the back with Grant Stewart, 8 and 12 in blues colours but Cullen gets it away on to BT it's the first points of the final for the Ayrshire Bulls and in his third appearance in the championship final Bobby Beatty crosses the whitewash for the first time and that's a great response from the Bulls yeah I was just thinking the Ayrshire Bulls they're not going to go away you know they've, they've went three scores down in this first half but They've almost made this one look easy, but a great maul. Um, Reese Cullen, you could see tugging at the ball there from Grant Stewart, um, just to, to take that momentum from the maul and um, the short option, Robert Beatty coming down on a line there. It's a, it's a really good line. Um, good to take that ball. He did really well to take it as well and managed to get, to get over and to drag his team back into this one. Brad Roderick Evans, he's the leading point scorer. Oh, the Ayrshire Bulls now to 74 from the boot this season. But you could see the run, you could see the determination. Hiddleston just couldn't hold him away. Yeah, he's coming on that down line to take the ball, but you can see as soon as he takes it, squares himself up and gets back out off that right foot, um, which manages to take him between those two defenders. mistake all the way out and then we'll come back to the halfway line big scrum coming up here Sterling Rose having made the error they want to make sure that they don't give ball away again cheaply 
Yeah, and a midfield scrum is a, it's a strong position um, for the Ayrshire Bulls here because you've got the option. And I don't know if the referee will count as a potential 50-22 on the cards if they say it's not carried back over. It maybe depends where Reese Cullen puts his ball into the scrum. But um, that's something that, as a Sterling Wolves back three, you're thinking you've something you've got to cover. But then if you, if you go too far onto that side of things, then, then there's space on the edge. Um, so it's a great attacking platform if, if the Bulls can get a strong scrum here. All right, in the halfway line, so the ball will be put in squint, because it always is. That's not a knock on Reese Cullen, that's just how it happens now. Beatty on the overlap, Cullen. There's the clip kick through. It's an awkward bounce initially for Glenn Bryce. Sets himself and gets that away pretty well. Bouncing off the roof of the stand. Decent crowd inside the home of Edinburgh Rugby, the Hive Stadium. Well, finals have really disappointed in this competition. Southern Knights and Ayrshire Bulls went head to head in the first one. 26 16, the Bulls won. And Watsonians and Ayrshire Bulls, the final number two, 42 24, finished 24 24 and went to extra time. But the Bulls are playing from behind. Stirrup and Beatty. Glendening. And off the right wing. So ripped away. I think that fell the way of the Bulls. And again, it did come back to the Bulls, but holding on, Liam McPherson makes his case. And the referee strong in his decision making. Yeah, that's strong defence in the, the wide channel the there from Sterling Moles because it's a it's a tough backs play to defend that when you've got. 12 up, you've got 10 wrapping in behind you, using the blind side winger as well. You've almost got an extra man to cover. Um, so it's a, it's a big win for the Sterling Moles defence there, the back line, and earning a turnover because the Bulls from that scrum, they made their net gain down that touchline and they had a good attacking platform. Um, but it's yet another one from their point of view that, that goes loose. And Kenny has a little look at his watch. He's, he's worked as hard as anyone, I think he wants his feet up for five minutes. Taken down. James Pout reliable in the line out. Going to go ahead, Everybody trying to hold on. Grant Stewart's entitled to be where he is. Afshar holding. There's a little Hadsell. Just a little flick pass. Afshar again. It's adventurous. Comes into Horn. Bardelli. Bardelli, that was too easy. And eventually runs into Connor Gordon. Made good yardage. Cullen. Let me see if the 50 22 was on. It's just going to bounce up against him. Ross McKnight. There's the ball on the inside. It's into Ryan Southern. Well, there's one thing for surely. They're not playing any more conservatively now that the I mean they've got they had a 17 point lead it's down to 10 but it's not changed the game plan no I th and I think they're picking their moments well because they've got those kicking options but when it's on to maybe force an offload and, and try and get onto the front foot they're doing that and then like now they go back to Ben Afshar and kick a bit deeper Ole Horn so I think the Bulls have all three of the back three very confident in taking the ball here's Beatty Beatty and Rory Jackson with him. Tried to get the offload. Heron interrupted. Trying to claim for a knock on. It's now Ed Bloodworth leading the charge. The ball appears. Heron swatted away by Bardelli. That finds its way to Beatty. Beatty on the inside. And the referee decided that the ball had been knocked off. There must have been a knock on in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure where, but. I, see, I agree. I just think he was trying to see exactly where it came. And we all know that a rugby ball can move in mysterious ways. But it did look like you know, there were a couple of hands. Well, PT says he tried to get that into Cullen, and the referee was having none of it. Well, I couldn't see it myself there. It was actually it was scrappy and it was messy, but... Um, Strong first carry by Ed Bloodworth. He's a real workhorse in that Ayrshire pack. Um, turns in performances week in, week out. Um, you know he's had a he's had a really strong season. He's an important part of that team. Strong first carry. 
This is his ninth consecutive start. 44th appearance overall for the 26-year-old. There's Ed Hasdell, who got the scoring started. Always oh, nice when you score in the semi-final and the final. He's peaking at the right time, isn't he? He's, he's been good in this first half as well, and he obviously started off really well, but just strong in the carry, manages to, to evade defenders, and that's what you want from your number eight. Big stature as well. Strong part of that back row. Well, Sterling Wolves. If I were them, if I was Afshar, I'd delay this going in as long as I could. Make sure you cross to the 40 and pop it out of play and take a 10 point lead into the locker room. You can always rely on your scrum half to be the most intelligent man on the park. And that's exactly what he does. What a opening 40 minutes it's been. Here. Brilliant half of rugby. Sterling have, have really turned up. They started the game from the outset really well. In all honesty, I think you look at this Ayrshire Bulls team, it doesn't look like they're playing in the final. And I think that, that might be that might change at halftime. I'm sure from Pat MacArthur's point of view, he'll want that to change. But I think looking at them and what they're capable of and their potential, I think they don't look like they're playing in a final where a Sterling have turned up. They've done their job. They've got over the, the whitewash on three occasions and they're really in the driving seat in this match. What a first half it has been, the Ayrshire Bulls. I think the Sterling Wolves by 17 points to 7. Let's have a look back at the first half, which has brought four tries. This was the first of them. Excellent work. Hiddleston, who's been at the centre of almost everything. Lewis McNamara was a little bit unlucky. We just watch the positioning here. Has dealt a little run, and three goes. You mentioned that Lee just picked the hole perfectly. Yeah, and, and just off the left foot a bit there, there was almost a hint of a half dummy, which just forced the defenders to, to sit down that wee bit. Um, and it, was a, it was a great start for Sterling, five minutes in. Touchdown nicely, what an opening to the game. Many had felt that if the Wolves were going to be competitive in this one, they had to get the first score or two on the board. And that's precisely what they did. Again, look at Hiddleston. He's been the star man so far, driving his way through. Cullen took him down. But then the ball moved quickly. And Heron with a pass, just took it away from Glenn Denning. And Bryce made sure he was getting in at the corner. It's a difficult one. You've got to make sure, are you confident enough to take it or do you want to give the next pass? But I think McKnight might have run out of room. Yeah, I think so. And just the way the defence was coming across there. Um, this line-out play that... that there was a few options there. Gregor Hiddleston did really well to pick the right one, and that's what makes it difficult to defend. Eddie Pollock talked about, you know, them having some smart plays last week against Heriots, and they've brought that into the final as well. Mikey Heron did really well to almost step and give that pass in one motion. He knew the space was there. He knew Glenn Bryce and Ross McKnight were outside. Um, and as we mentioned as well, it's a, it's a, they had to be a strong finish from Glenn Bryce as well. It was a mistake from the line-out. Hiddleston and Breeze led the charge. Just look how quick Tom Smith was up there as well. Good tackle from Ollie Horn, just caught the ankles. Again, James Pow in there very quickly. And Craig Jackson with a kick. Sublime in nature. And Andy Sturrock could do nothing to defend with a run through of Ross McKnight. And the Wolves at that point led by 70 points to nil. Yeah, started by Gregor Hiddleston again. That man, if he's starting something off it. The moment it looks like it's going to end in a Wolves try, and it was, it was smart vision uh, by Craig Jackson and a good finish by Ross McKnight. Um, but a word for George Breeze as well, who, in the open field on the line break, just had the composure to hold up that pass really well and um, to keep the momentum of that play, and it was a real team effort. Well, the Bulls needed to reply, and they did so. Won it from the line out, kept it nice and tight. Grant Stewart tucked it up, you could see Reese Cullen issuing the instructions to him, saying I'll take that, first man was Beatty, and he found his way over the line, much to the delight of everyone in pink, including the replacements, celebrating the score. That was a big moment for the Bulls, they needed to get something on the board before halftime. Yeah, and that came directly after that score from Ross McKnight, and you know, if you're going to take the ball as a nine from the back of that mall, you 
I think you, you almost have to score or you've got eight forwards to answer to, you know, when you go back. And um, But the, the, the options with two centres coming down there, it's a tough one to defend and Robert Beattie does really well to come in to get out and, and get across the line, which kind of showed us that the Ayrshire Bulls weren't going away and they're still in this final. This is the 186th Super Series game. We've had nearly 8,000 points. We've had over 1,300 tries and we have had a cracking start to this final in 2023. We'll take a short break. Do join us for the whole of the second half from the Hive Stadium in Edinburgh. The Super Series Championship. Ayrshire Bull 7, Stirling Wool 17. The halftime scoreline.
And welcome back to our coverage of the Force Rock Super Series Championship Final. What a game it's been so far in this first half. The Sterling Wolves have been on the hunt for points. They gathered 17 of them before the Usher Bulls managed to find their way across the try line. Will be Beatty's try converted by Brad Roderick Evans. The try from Hasdell, Bryce and McKnight. And of Sterling Wolves ahead. And it's a lot more sombre looking. Pat MacArthur. 35 year old from Irvine. 150 Glasgow Warriors appearances, six caps for his country. And underway in the final 40 minutes of this championship season. If it is tied up, we would go to extra time. It's just been one draw in the Super Series so far this season. 21 21. Heriots and the Southern Knights, which denied the Southern Knights the chance to find their way to the playoffs. As it was, strong end to the season for the Sterling Wolves. Lost the first two, lost three of their first five. And at that point, you wouldn't have dreamed of having a ten-point lead in the final. But they're here. And they fit the form at the right time. And now it's a tough, tough test. And the Bulls from Ayrshire. Jamie Drummond is in the action. 17 for the Bulls. Cullen. Bryce. Throw into McNamara and McPherson. Try the counter. Rock and have stolen it. But illegally. Alongside me. This afternoon, the man with the Holy Trinity of Scottish rugby played for Edinburgh, played for Glasgow, and played for Scotland. Doesn't get much better than that. Here's Lee Jones. Yeah, it was a cracking first half, wasn't it, Paul? Um, and we'll be hoping this second half goes in a similar fashion. Um, Ayrshire unlucky there with uh, a counter-attack. You could hear the call of blast from the touchline, from the coaching box. Um, and it looked to be a, a clean turnover for Liam McNamara, but um, the ref deemed it to be, I think, in from the side. So Sterling um, continue with the momentum of that first half. Um, as, we, as we move on. Beautiful moonlit night in Edinburgh. The rain of earlier in the day dissipated. There's a little gap here. Afshar saw it. And if you're a scrum half, you'll know that when you see the gap and go for it, and all of a sudden you're wrestled to the ground, you realise you've made the wrong call. Afshar. Jackson again. There's a little clip kick through. It's good play. You've got... You've got double advantage there. You either get somebody on the end of it yourself or it puts the defence on their heels and they're actually hoping it's going to just go out. Yeah, it's smart because it, there's a potential, you know, um, it's a potential to overplay here. Um, still in, they've gained a bit of momentum. Ben Afshar did really well to, to spot the space on the blind side and get down. Um, real temptation, I think, um, to, to force the phases and, you know, being in that 22. But Craig Jackson's just thought, We'll put it in behind, we'll force Bulls to exit and play. Um, and it's, it's really composed by the rules. Good work by Jackson. Almost charged down by James Pout. Stretching out those long, long limbs. He's six foot four. 55 appearances now. And I'm born in Kirkcaldy. And Blair McPherson knows what it's like to win a final to be the runner-up captain. And the Ayrshire will spark a comeback in this one. Ten points down, plenty of time. And Grant Stewart is still there, and they're joining him. The Wolves trying to find a way through. Samasaitis is going to force Cullen. Price tried to get there, ball was knocked on. And that's what you're looking for from that kick, you're looking for it to be contested and hope that the opposition doesn't take it clean. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of this last week. Um, really accurate box kicking from Reese Cullen and just putting it into that space where it creates a wee bit of indecision. First half um, was really good. In that case, there was probably like a bit of indecision on both sides, but... Um, 
you know it's then down to a 50-50 and you can come up with a with the ball um, in the opposition half. Eddie Pollock said it last week, knockout rugby is such a different animal to the to the championship series. And one of the things we will likely see is players going longer than they would normally go because you want your best 15 on the park as much as you can. It's great scrummaging work from the Wolves. They were solid. It was Jamie Drummond who was coming in at the angle. And you can see what it means to the pack. Magmalia Stamosaitis getting a lot of the applause. Yeah, it looked like a stronger scrum from Ayrshire there, but referee deemed a penalty on the Wolves' side. Um, Ayrshire swapping both their props, Jamie Drummond on and William Farquhar on. Um, at half-time, Jamie Drummond had a great impact last week um, off the bench for Ayrshire. And Pat MacArthur will be looking for similar from him tonight. A couple of tries last week in that 38-22 victory over Watsonians. Well, this season, these sides met on the 4th of August. Two-point win for the Ayrshire Bulls at Stirling. Bridge Hall, packing game. 26-28, the Bulls left with the points. As Jackson sends it high in the air, there's pressure coming here. Horn has spilled it. Redeeming. The ball did not go forward. Cullen. Bloodworth leading the charge. No change to the tackling level. It remains ferocious. Bulls had an easier win back on their home turf. 45 17 at the end of September. By state by Glenn Bryce. Lewis McNamara was up quickly, held him. Asher, Breeze waits for it. Good wrestling by Pau as well. You can see the figures. Drummond and Farquhar trying to find their way through. The horn was taken in the air. The referee's going to allow play to continue. That's the little clip kick through. And then being held by McKnight, there's no way through to come back for the penalty. Just have to take it easy, guys. And they do it. It's, it's so easy just to want to keep going. You know you've got to discipline yourself. Don't give the referee any excuse to ping you. But there was in the air just a little bit early from Ryan Summer. Yeah, that's a, a fair call. I think penalty is probably the right one. It's like you can see from Ryan Summer, it's, it's a natural. It's a bit of a natural reaction to, to kind of put the arm out, but no malice, and um, he came down safely. So, yeah, penalty the right call on that one, I think. There's Mikey Heron. And it's difficult for referees as well. You know that yellow cards can have such an impact on a game. You want to, if you are going to have to use a card, you want to be 100% correct. Especially in finals, you don't want to be the talking point. That shirt just managed to hold on to that. Rolling ball. Bryce takes with a confidence. And there's the error. It was a bit close to Ed Timpson. A knock on advantage being played. Roderick Evans. Beatty will reverse back to the left hand side. Connor Gordon says, No, you won't. There's the penalty, not moving away. Well, again, you can just see the intensity of both teams. Nobody's giving up on anything. On that occasion, though, Kirsten tried to go for the ball, and the referee was then unimpressed. Yeah, I think he called... Did he call him not rolling away, potentially there, which I thought was maybe harsh on Conor Gordon. I thought it was a good decision by Robert Beatty to come back down on that short side, but then as soon as you see Conor Gordon in there, you're probably thinking maybe not so smart a decision because he's such a strong defender. Um, he did end up getting penalised there. I think it was potentially harsh, um, but he's in a strong position now. Better with a line out. On to Blair McPherson. Ball is at the back. Grant Stewart is hard to stop. 
The ball is still to the left-hand side. Fool the cameraman for a moment. Jamie Drummond, 17, he'll lend his bulk, trying to push their way forward. Back it comes, that's Farquhar. Little pass on the inside. Good defensive set by the Wolves. But the Bulls still have it. Trying to find a way through. Again, Farquhar waits. Cullen, the scrum half, stands off. Sweeney and McNamara with the two players together. Cullen. It was a little bit low. Jackson did well to hold on to that. There's the counter ruck. The ball spills to the side. Cullen is there. That's good work by Hiddleston. Picked up again by Drummond. Farquhar waits. Stewart is there, drops the shoulder, tries to find the line. Good defence from the Wolves so far. The ball is out. And now they're trying to drive. And the referee has given the score. Well, it's excellent work from the Ayrshire Bulls. They never gave up. They drove on and on and on. And they're rewarded with a try. This was tough, tough work, wasn't it? Yeah, they're, they're going back to their strength, aren't they, with the pack? Hey, Bloodworth, with the score, picked up, drove on. Oh, that's excellent play. Uh, Bloodworth scoring for the first time as an Ayrshire Bull, which is quite remarkable. But what a time to get the try. Yeah, it's a timely one, isn't it? As we mentioned before, he's been strong all season. And it's good to see him get across the line. Ayrshire worked their way in from the, the mall on the far side there, and then as they got towards the halfway line, come back against the green. There was a really quick pick in there by Grant Stewart. Good body position. They're recycling the ball well. And Bloodworth just manages to, to squeeze himself through on the left-hand post, um, and it brings this scoreline much closer. Okay, this is... Sterling Wolves. Well, in terms of a way win, Sterling Wolves, they've done well. They had their way win. And the Buttermere Bears to seal their place. They then had the great win at last Wade last week against Heriots. And now they're looking for a third straight away win. Away from home. Something they haven't done. Chris Elliott is introduced to the action. He was 22 for the Ayrshire Bulls. A three-point game. Afshar. Well, Eddie Pollock will just be wanting his side to settle down, get the next score, and restore some of that lead. But some great counter rocking coming from the Ayrshire Bulls. And the ball is turned over. That was just power. Difficult one for Roderick Evans. Ended it well in the end. Price. And it was out on the full. Just starting to turn this game against Sterling. They need to settle down here. Yeah, the small margins, isn't it? There you could see what Glenn Bryce was trying to do. Just low trajectory over the top there. To put the pressure back on the Bulls. It was a good turnover on the third occasion. They managed to get their rewards um, for that counter ruck um, it's a real weapon and something they've been looking to do um, on the many occasions so far well the line has not been guaranteed for either side so they will contest this big throw coming up for Grant Stewart so I'll take in Rory Jackson who's losing his headband BT tries to get his way through Back to Cullen, 18 is Farquhar. He's got a bit of beef. His way through the 30-year-old. There's the interception though, and McKnight could be away here. But it's just green, green grass, and he's going to go all the way home. Well, what a turnaround, the pass inside from Chris Elliott. And Ross McKnight gets his second try of the evening. 
Well, if there's one player you don't want to be passing the ball to, it's Ross McKnight. He's electric, and he realised the chance was on. You could see exactly what Elliot was trying to do, and you can see the results all the way from the 10-metre line, all the way for another score. That's tremendous defensive play by Ross McKnight. As the open side winger there, he's probably a man down. He's potentially got two men to cover, but he just gets himself up into that passing line. And the height of the man, he just manages to jump up and, and pick it off. And we've seen him do that before. We've seen it earlier in the season. I remember him down at Megatland against Borough Muir. Exactly the same. Um, he's making a habit of it. But that's, a, that's an important score because it's almost against the way you felt that the momentum was starting to go towards the Bulls. They were getting their driving mall going. There was real pace in the ruck ball there in the lead-up. Um, and that's a real killer blow in terms of defensive work from Sterling Rules to just nudge that score back ahead. 101 points now from the boots of Marcus Holden in this championship season. And it's a restoration of a 10 point advantage. You see what Elliot wanted to do, simply didn't have enough height to get it to Glendenning. Oh, well, Rosman Knight simply doesn't miss chances like that. Try number 15 for the season. It's a mammoth kick. Roger Kevin said it high in the air. The chase was good. The Wolves managed to get there. Again, the entry is not to the satisfaction of the referee. Uh, Roderick Evans. Seven, Bob, yeah. Greg Jackson is down for a moment. Well, the Esher Bulls lost their opener 11 points to three against Watsonians. It was their first home loss in over two years. Since that opening day loss, they've lost only two of 12 to Watsonians away and Heriot's away. They've responded well to that opening day disappointment. Sterling Wolves are hitting form at the right time. And it's still grim for Matt McArthur. Ten point gap at half time. The ten point gap still remains Lee. Yeah, this second half has just carried on from what we've seen in the first half. Um, all action rugby, both teams going at each other, and as I say, the hold. Sterling Wolves managed to hold the ten points against what looked like a momentum swing for the Bulls early on, um, but that will again give the, the Sterling boys massive confidence earning that one back. And they lost an interception try last week as well to Watsonians. That, that, that's Bulls rugby, they play right on the edge, they go for it, they're not, you know. Don't get involved. Stay down there, Mark. Take a bigger gap if you want to. You stay there, please. Thank you. Referee inviting Gregor Hiddleston not to get involved. Don't move. I wonder if Russell McKnight was maybe inspired by Dom Kutsia last weekend down at Millbrae because it was almost a carbon copy. It was the same area of the field. And they were very similar. Um, pick and interception. Hiddleston has it at the back. They're grabbing at him. 20 is Hamish Ferguson on for Sterling Wolves. Afshar. Batted down. And that will be a knock on. Well, he doesn't make too many mistakes, Ben Afshar. Just has a little look of regret on his face, the 20 year old. Eighth grade internationalist, former Bulls player. Yeah, he's, a, he's had a really tidy game so far, Ben Afshar. I actually thought that one had come off Ryan Sweeney, but on reflection, yeah, I think he caught his arm and um, it did go forward. Yeah, just did enough to touch. Well, the rain's returned. It is November after all in Edinburgh. Two teams serving up a tasty treat in this 2023 Super Series Championship final. First, 
out wide. Price on the inside. Jackson. The long kick. It's thrown completely. I'm not sure Reece Cullen. Credit to him, he made it look like he meant to do that. <laughs> I don't think he did. Yep. Didn't fancy it in the end. It's a tough ball to take that, and you can see that when it's swirling, maybe when the ball's not... It was always easier to catch kicks when they're struck really well. If it's slightly off strike, those ones, they come down, the movement on it. Reese Cullen actually probably did well to leave that one, um, as opposed to snatching at it and potential knock-on. The goal line dropout. Just didn't take the chance it wasn't going to go through the in-goal area. McKnight, lovely play. Bryce, Bryce tries to get it out. Rockley is on. Makes a good first touch to try and put the ball through. Just too heavy. He's just been a little bit less. Sam Rockley always likes to introduce himself. It's not a bad pass, is it? How about that from Ed Hastel as well? Yeah, lovely touch by Ed Hastel and out the, out the back of the hand from Ross McKnight. Um, it looked like Wolves had numbers there. You could see Glenn Bryce was trying to put the ball into space for his outside backs to come on to. Uh, maybe an opportunity gone begging there, I think. Sam Rockley, just 18. Came through London Irish Academy, Scotland under 18 player. And been training with Edinburgh. Grant Stewart is withdrawn. Audrey Tanner comes on. Tim Brown as well comes on. So the Bulls going to the bench a little bit quicker than their opponents. Tim Brown with the back scrum cap. I think Pat MacArthur trying to spark a bit of a bit of change within his team there, just hoping for some impact off the bench. I think something needs to change from that an Ayrshire Bulls side of things and you'll be hoping that one of those guys can maybe spark something um, and get the momentum shift that those boys need to get themselves back into the game. One team to play. Ten point advantage as it was at half time. Lots of effort from both. The ball is at the back. The penalty advantage is coming. It is. That's good scrummaging work from the Usher Bulls. And it's now Tanner, Drummond and Farquhar is the front three. Lee, if you were Eddie Pollock and you were ten points up at the half in 62 minutes and you're still ten points up, you'd be more than satisfied. Definitely, and I think his message would have been more of the same for the first half because we talked about it coming into this game. You've got a team that are used to being in finals and you've got Sterling, who last year finished bottom of the pile at this time of the year, and they've managed to drag themselves into a final from some great performances, and those are the guys that are potentially inexperienced in this situation, but on this game so far, you'd say they're, they're the team that look like they're playing the final, um, you know, better. Not only were the bottom of the championship last season, it was just nine points. And it's all they gathered. Now, here come the Bulls. That seemed to go to ground. <laughs> the jersey over there is usually a celebration. Not for a mall. There's the kick on the angle. Can he get it? Glenn Denning. Lovely little ball back inside. Ollie Horn goes after it. Ollie Horn will score here. That is nothing but persistence from the Ayrshire Bulls. What a beautiful little kick inside by Thomas Glendening. Ollie Horn didn't give up on it, and all the way through he went, although Sterling Wills will feel they should have closed this one out. Tremendous, tremendous finish. Thomas Glendening, just his awareness to get that. He knew he was going into touch, the defender was on him, to get it onto his toe, to keep it in. Superb play, and Ollie Horn finishing up to dot it down, but very similar play to the one that Ross McKnight picked off earlier on. Brad Roderick Evans on this occasion decided to go to the boot, knowing that Ross McKnight's probably playing high. There's going to be a bit of space in there. Um, and as I just mentioned, Thomas Glendon, a lovely bit of skill um, and great finish. A first there should boost. Try for Ollie Horn. Back to a five point game. This is a big kick. 
for Brad Roderick Evans. The Welsh have made his debut in the Super Series. Appeared in every game. The kick is low, it's off target. Well, back to an unconverted try between the two teams. Five of the 11 meetings of these two clubs decided by eight points or less at this level, but Glenn Denning, that was clever. McKnight had a little look to see where his pass might go, and in the end couldn't gather, and Ollie Horn didn't give up. Game on. Yeah, very smart play by the Bulls. I say the same play, but they've gone to the kick option, and Sterling didn't do a lot wrong in defence, and it just required that wee bit of magic. Thomas Glenn Denning and awareness, and that's what's earned his team the score. Skinner. There's one of the options, Rainer Kennedy and Liam Korn. The options from the bench. That's high. Nineteen Hamish Ferguson, twenty Murray Knott. A couple of the changes for Stone and Rose Sam Rockley tries to go underneath it. Can't gather it, it's then knocked on. First one, no, no, Sterling. First one, no, Second off, number four, no, it's not. Tom Smith just inquiring, but it was the correct call. And George Breeze is still on there. So, too, alongside him, Gregor Hiddleston. Tom Scientist has been replaced. It's unusual 66 minutes to see, you know, two of the original three in the front row still on, but these are key, key players for the Wolves. Yeah, and going up against a fresh front row coming on, a strong, you know, substitute front row from Ayrshire as well. They'll be trying to get an upper hand in this scrum, but Sterling also knowing that they need to keep them in the game with a, with a strong scrum. Going down. My referee will ask for the reset. <laughs> a little bit of extra curricular activity going on. Yes, Skinner is the third of the front trio. Oh, what a final. Inside's first met the Ayrshire Bulls and Stirling County as it was before they changed the name to Stirling Wolves back in 2019. It was 8-0 to the Ayrshire Bulls, a low scoring game between the two. Well, they've gone down on this side. The referee is going to have to make a decision. And he's indicating that it was a slip, nothing more. Well, the Ayrshire Bulls in every game since that 8 0 win have gone 20 points or more point. over Sterling. Keep it that way, okay? Keeping up. High binds, feet on the body. To get something out of this final, you have to score again. Crunch! Binds! Set! from both Cullen from McPherson Big Evans no way through for Bardelli ball is back on the Bulls side through the hands of Ryan Sweeney 
Bobby Beattie fancies taking this for a wander but can't keep his feet. Really not on him quickly. Coming back on the inside. Some of the shouts from the bench for offside. The way through for Rory Jackson. Cullen out again. Beattie holding to just enough to bring him down. Cullen making the call for Tim Brown. Cullen back on the inside again. No way through. Drummond returns the ball onto Cullen. Roderick Evans with a long pass. Horn. Not really sure Bardelli could do much with that. I think some referees will go to sleep at the end of the game hearing the words offside ref ringing in their ears almost every time. I've never seen a ref give it. <laughs> <laughs> Not when it's asked for any. Certainly not what it's asked for. Sam Rockley will leave that for Glenn Bryce. And the Bulls just get a little bit frustrated there. They weren't making more ground. Really not. Having a little rumble. I'm not sure the ball's come back cleanly, but it has come back. Drummond has to move away. He's done so. Half shot. Well, there's the high kick. It's going to be a little bit of pressure coming on Horn. Horn tries to get away from McKnight. Has done so. Southern tries to bring him down, and still is there. Under 10 to play, what a final. Five points the difference. Cullen, dummied the kick. Has that been overcooked? It has. Well, just a little bit too long on that occasion. And again, it's, it's a momentum swing, isn't it? Yeah, these moments can go a long way to deciding how the, the tail end of this game pans out as we enter the last ten minutes. You know, these decisions going one way or the other, or whether they're 50 yards up the pitch or whether they're stuck there, it's, it can have a big bearing on, on how this match finishes. Momentum-wise, I think Sterling just grown in confidence throughout this match from a really strong start and Bulls have just consistently been trying to stay in the game which they have done you know and, and this one is going to go down to the wire um, but Sterling I think looking the more confident team at the moment that's the figure of Lewis Skinner Lewis Skinner off the bench he's been off the bench in the last two games comes off the bench more often than not eight times this season Changes coming. And there's Reese Cullen. He has to take a seat. Fergus Johnson will now be charged with guiding from the scrum half position. That's a good take. And it's back with Gregor Hiddleston. Penalty advantage coming. This is a free play. Holden. Back on to Afshar. Afshar trying to find a way through. Can't get past 20. Tim Brown. And the scrum cap on where he started. Doesn't have one now. And the penalty will come. Was that a drop goal attempt? Or was that a kick to the side? <laughs> Did I say worth a shot? Yeah. I'm sure it was much of a shot from Big Jackson. Um, yeah, definitely the penalty advantage. It's a good carry, Marcus Holden. They, they just look composed, Sterling. It'd be easy on a penalty advantage to immediately go to the, you know, the extravagant play, the kick to the touchline. But he was happy with a, with a strong carry, pushed the offload, which Ben Afshar managed to, to beat a couple of men. Thank um, you. The longer this clock Time keeps ticking, happier Sterling will be at the moment, especially being in the Bulls' half. Yeah, it's interesting in terms of, you know, the five-point advantage, kick the penalty. 
you know, you, you put yourself more in the head, but they're backing themselves here. Yeah, I, I wonder if they've got another line-out trick playing there. They've used up two of them. Uh, I wonder if they've got another. It's a strong position, but like you say, Paul, three points would have been a big play. Well, they've got the first part correct. Gregor Hiddleston wants it at the back. He has it at the back. He's now having to escape. He's well marshaled. Roderick Evans trying to get in there. He needs to show a release. He's done so. Arsha tries to find the glory. Two metres short. Big moment in the game. Lewis Skinner tries the drive. Has that. And wide it goes. Can they puncture the Bulls line? They're going to try and send it out wide. Here's the chance for Glenn Bryce. Bryce to win it. It's going to be a long way back for the Ayrshire Bulls now and that might have sealed the championship for the Sterling Wolves. Glenn Bryce crosses the try line for the second time in the final and what a score that is for Sterling Wolves. That's a huge, huge play in the context of this game. Sterling, we called it. Would they go for the... Or should they have went for the penalty? They kicked to the corner. It was a strong maul. Gregor Hiddleston breaks off and then they pull the trigger at the right time. Decide to go wide. Glenn Bryce just a little skip onto the outside. Real strength of his and it's a strong, strong left-hand fend that manages to get across. He's been provided experience for this team the whole season and he's really shown to the fore in this final. Oh, Marcus Holden will take his time over this take every second off the clock where he can possibly get away with five tries for the Sterling Wolves can he add the extra two his kicking has not matched his general play as it was after 40 minutes as it was after 61 minutes and as it is now after 75 minutes it's a 10 point advantage to the Sterling Wolves. You talk about pulling the trigger at the right time, it's, it's tempting to keep that ball tight and I'm sure for the pack they'd have quite happily continued to go around the corner but um, you know if you can execute in the right moment and with the threats on the edge, especially Glenn Bryce there and his ability to get on the outside, um, in hindsight great call from Sterling. the first part here, that's to gather and clear because the Bulls know they're running out of time Oscar Baird is on, blue scrum cap there McPherson on the inside, here's the chance to open up for Fergus Johnson <laughs> 16 is Andre Tanner the ball is spilled loose. That's the Bulls who have to let loose now. No way through for Bobby Beatty. Johnson. Lewis McNamara. The contest he's had. Fergus Johnson, Brad Roderick Evans. And the Sterling Wolves, what they don't want to do is give any penalties away side entry, it's what they've just done and they'll go quickly Fergus Johnson Bardelli I thought they might have gone for the kick to get the territory and win the line out, it would have taken more time off the clock however so smart rugby Tanner tries to blast his way through Ed Haster Johnston in the hands of Farquhar three and a half minutes to go Beatty, there's the ball on to Horn to the try scorers. Well, an eight try contest that hasn't disappointed. The Ayrshire Bulls don't feel they're done yet. Winners in 2021, runners up last season. Currently. Another runner up position for them, Bardelli. There's no way through. Tanner 
Martin Brown, Ed Haslow being pushed away. Fergus Johnson on the inside. What a tackle that is. Is Marcus Holden. Oh, the skipper leading the way. An attempted rip came from Haslow. Didn't work. Can the Bulls find a way through? They're going to try. Beatty. Little tap tackle. I'm not sure Kennedy necessarily released them properly. And the referee right there. The Bulls continuing to go with the clock running in favour of the men in red and black. Chris Elliott at the charge. Blair McPherson. What a tackle from Connor Gordon. Johnson tries to find a way through. Again, that's great work by Ryan Southern. Holding up. Again, good discipline not to come over the top as well. McPherson urging his players forward. Ryan Sweeney. And some help from Oscar Baird. This has been a terrific effort. Roderick Evans lays it back. Here's Beatty. They need something to happen quickly. Beatty did well to take that, being held up well by Hamish Ferguson. This is resolute defending from the Sterling Wolves. The Bulls not able to find a way through. Really trying to bang their way on. And player of the match, Lee Jones will nominate Gregor Hiddleston. He's been terrific, hasn't he? Yeah, there's been a few standout performances, but everything that was good, especially in that first half, was, was born from Gregor Hiddleston. I think the way that Sterling Moves are defending right now has epitomised their defensive performance throughout the game. But Kyle McGee races away. The man he replaced, Ben Afshar, had a terrific match at nine. Glenn Bryce got himself over for two tries, but you know there's been some standout performances from Sterling they've really fronted up in this final they've played the final perfectly I think they've defended really well um, and some good performances on the Ayrshire side as well you know because it's it's been a tighter game than, than maybe the, the scoreline now suggests um, that final try by Glenn Bryce just changed it they could have gone for the kick they could have gone for the eight point advantage but they didn't do so and Eddie Pollock, well, he's a bit of a legend around Sterling County, he would just be adding to his mistakes, Sean Kennedy, Duncan Hodge, they've done well. Yeah, they've come into this final with an obvious game plan, tactically, defensively, the way they've kicked as well, and the key moments, they've, they've done the right thing, they've managed to score in key moments as well. Is there to be a last hurrah for the Ayrshire Bulls? The ball is there. Andrew Tanner. There's the turnover. There's the ball kicked out of play. And the referee will check with his timekeeper because he did ask for time to be off. The on screen clock slightly ahead. And the referee indicating that time had not yet expired. Crews 80 40, but the referee just brought things to a halt. I think when Kyle McGee ran all the way through, but it's as good as over. Yeah, it just puts those celebrations on ice for maybe another 30 seconds or so. The boys know they've, they've won the match. Okay. Time, Time is on. An average. 57 points per game, 8 tries per game. Well, we've had 8 tries here. I'm short of the 57 points, but it's been a thriller. Bloodworth takes. Tim Brown, Bobby Beatty, Connor Gordon meets him well. Still like Wolves with a counter-ruck. The ball is available. Johnston, Rockley has it. 
And the scrum will be given for the knock-on, but the referee doesn't have to play it. Well, a few weeks ago, you weren't sure they were going to even make the playoffs. They've come through the number one seeds and now the number two seeds to take the championship. Last season's bottom of the championship side with just nine points have turned it around in a year. And the Super Series championship winners are Sterling Wolves and on their performance over the last few weeks, deservedly so, for the first time in their short history, they win four straight Super Series games and they are the champions. Lee Jones, what a reward for an end to the season. Yeah, it's all about timing for the Sterling Wolves and they've timed this to perfection. Their run up into the final, the way they performed in the semi-final last weekend and this for a, a final performance has been out of the top draw. They've been absolutely excellent tonight and they've put a team who are used to being in finals, who are used to playing at the top end of this league to the sword. I said at halftime it you know, potentially didn't look like Ayrshire Bulls were playing in a final, but I think that was credit to the way that Sterling were playing. The pressure they put themselves, um, the opposition under, they defended like dogs the whole game um, and continued to do so into the, the latter stages, and I think that really set the stage for them. Well, it's been terrific rugby. And Ayrshire Bulls needed to get on the scoreboard at the start of the second half. And they did just that. They trailed 17 to 7 at half time, a 10 point gap. There was some excellent work. And eventually, Ed Ludworth scores for the first time for the Bulls to get over the line. And you could sense that's exactly what Pat MacArthur had asked of them get on the scoreboard first, narrow that gap once again, and we will go from there. We got within three points, and that was to be the closest they were going to get all evening. They had a strong start to that second half and they earned a counter-ruck penalty. They kicked the touch. They got their driving mall going and then the Ayrshire pack do what they do best and Ed Bloodworth manages to come back against the, dra the grain and get themselves over that set up for a, for a great second half. And they were pushing, but this might have just swung the pendulum. The long ball out towards the winger, towards Glenn Denning, wasn't high enough and Ross McKnight simply taking advantage of it, much to delight the Sterling fans on the far side. And the tournament's top try scorer, well, a double for the day, 15 for the season. And it was just unfortunate from Chris Haley, just didn't put enough air on it. And at Lee, you'll know any winger that gets that opportunity wants to scamper all the way to score. Yeah, it was going to be tough to, to get it over Ross McKnight there. He was in a, he was in a good position defensively and talk about timing the timing of this one in the game Ayrshire had just got back on the scoreboard they, they had a great set play there you know looking to, to put ball towards the timing of this one it just managed to get Sterling back to that 10 point gap um, again keep their confidence on a high um, and it was an, a really important point in that second half well Ayrshire Bulls never gave up simply not in their DNA and this was just an unbelievable score. The ball played inside. And Ollie Horn, clever, clever play from Thomas Glendening. Great try. And Ollie Horn again narrowed the gap. Five points on that occasion. It was a great clip kick through by Roderick Evans. But this is clever play. You know you're going to be tackled. It was great covering from Glenn Bryce. He couldn't have done any more. Yeah, it was a similar picture to the last score there, but bad Roderick Evans, you know, had the smarts to just put it on his boot there and as you say Sterling didn't do a lot wrong but this ball back in from Thomas Glendin and he even he puts an extra bit of spin on it just to keep it away from Ross McKnight and Ollie Horn chases it up well it was a really well deserved and well crafted score the Sterling Wolves were not to be denied they were to restore the advantage back to 10 points the same it was at the break and it was Glenn Bryce took it just moved away, Bardelli crashed over, six minutes to play. And it was the moment that Ayrshire Bulls realised there was too much to try and get back and Sterling Wolves, well, not only did he score the try, but he managed the game out superbly. Yeah, and there was a feeling there that that was the match winner, wasn't it? Um, you know, in commentary I didn't mention, but Craig Jackson's pass out to 
to Glenn Bryce was, was on the money as well. And as I mentioned, they pulled the trigger at the right time. They had the forwards on the front line looking to carry, but they just pull it out back to Craig Jackson and then a perfectly weighted pass out to Glenn Bryce, who still had a lot of work to do. He manages to skip on the outside as he does and then really strong left-hand fend, put him across for his second try. Well, both teams shaking hands and now tough moments for the Ayrshire Bulls as they get their medals. Times when you've shaking your opponent by the hand, you just want to get back in the dressing room, but they'll sportingly stay on and applaud. And as you can see, Jamie Drummond there getting his medal. William Farquhar as well. But at the celebrations are for the Sterling Wolves. What a game they had. Tough for Blair McPherson. He'll take pride in his Ayrshire Bulls side getting to the final three consecutive times. Runner-up is the title. Twenty twenty-three Super Series Championship winners are Sterling Wolves, Mike Aaron, with a big smile on his face. Marius Tanasitis, he played his part all the way through. Some really strong rugby. And every one of these players deserve the medals. You can see the beads of sweat are still there. Such hard work. Gregor Hiddleston was superb throughout. I mean, he was just at the heart of everything for those tries. And the first half, Ed has to with a score. Yeah, and it was a tough ask for that Sterling pack. You know, coming against consistently probably the strongest team you know, throughout this series and we've seen them last week against Watsonians, that's what really won them that semi-final was the strength of the pack, the strength of their scrum. Um, Ayrshire swapped their, their front row around half time, but that Sterling pack held their own. Um, they got the upper hand when they needed it. Um, so, you know, hats off to that Sterling eight and those boys that came off the bench as well. Um, it was a really strong performance that, you know, set their stall out for, for that performance as well. Well, the reserve players also getting their medals. They played their part in their way through to this. Sterling Wolves using 45 players throughout this campaign. The Usher Bulls used just 34. Along with Harry, it's the lowest number. It was a tough start to the season for those Sterling Wolves, but it ends perfectly for them for our coach Eddie Pollock who's enjoyed masterminding back-to-back -back wins against Heriots and the Ayrshire Bulls. The championship trophy will go back to Bridge Hall. Marcus Holden enjoys this moment. The Sterling Wolves are the champions in 2023. What a turnaround. And you have to say it was well, well deserved. Well, what a championship it has been. The Force Rock Super Series comes to a close for 2023. The Isher Bulls came close. The Sterling Wolves went one better. They win the final by 29 points to 19 for Lee Jones, from myself, Paul Mitchell, and from all the crew. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.